few you shouldn't have, but you have. Welcome to Taskmaster with me, your Taskmaster, Greg Davis. People often ask me, what if the tables were turned? How would you like it? How would you feel? Well, these are great questions, but it will never happen, so stop asking me. <laughs> because it's these people who are taking on my tasks for the ultimate honour of raising aloft this handsome, face-shaped trophy. Please welcome them. They are Ian Sterling. <laughs> Joe Thomas. Lou Sanders. Paul Sinha. And Sean Gibson. And here, a man whose name doesn't humiliate him anywhere near as much as his personality. It <laughs> is... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> it's little Alex Hall! <laughs> no messing around. Straight into the banter section. Mm -hmm. Alex leads this every week. Mm -hmm. Let's party. I've had my regular checkup at the GP. Yep. And things are looking good. I've got the results. OK. Uh, blood, 100%. All blood, no, <laughs> no milk. Vision, he said I look nice. Weight, 100 kg. Heart rate, 100 BPM. He's rounded a lot of them up. Cholesterol, 100 uh, kmph. Doctor's favourite number, 100. And I can start smoking. <laughs> so as, long, as long as I'm careful, as long as I put it out before it gets to the orange bit, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Right, good. I've got no response for any of that. Okay. <laughs> are we starting with something different today, Alex? Yes, we are. It's the prize task. Yep. <laughs> and the category this week is the best burstable item. Mm. That's right. Whichever Greg judges is the top of the pops will get five points. And at the end of the show, <laughs> the winner will take home all five burstable items and go home with an inflated sense of pride. We're going to start with Joe. What was your burstable item? Grape. <laughs> It's obvious now that I, there's a sort of performative entertainment quality to this show, whereas I think I treated it more as a sort of data entry. <laughs> <laughs> you burst a grape. You I've... crush a grape. <gasps> no, mm. sorry, yeah, you burst. You no, 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 it's, no, it's, no, it's, no, no thank you, Sean. Yeah, you, you do crush, crush a grape. Oh, I could crush a grape. Him. <laughs> do you think we can burst a grape? I think if you pierce it with a pin, yeah. it wouldn't burst, I don't think. It wouldn't think... burst? Uh, isn't... Uh, what about, um... <laughs> to, I, I hate, to bring it, hate to bring it up, literally, uh, Keats. Well, I think it says I would burst against my palate fine. That's a great... No, I'm crush, yeah. crush against my palate ah, fine. Ah, yeah. That's literally the ah. opposite of what I should have done. <laughs> I'm going give a Is it crush it again? No, of course, of course it not. isn't. No. <laughs> Paul, uh, yes, Paul. Um, it's a gift from my auntie, my dad's sister, who came to stay with us for four long months last year. I've got a nephew and a niece. Nephew's five years old, likes balloons, so she bought him a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's a lot of debate at the moment about what you can and can't teach five-year-old children, but uh, <laughs> what I don't think you can do is give them inflatable penises at Christmas. <laughs> It might be me, but did you see a penis in no. there? No. 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 No, that's just your mind. There might be a penis in his mouth. <laughs> um, Ian? It's a cuddly beer toy. Aww. See? That's a great prize. Now imagine it being burst. <laughs> well, actually, the joke's on you, because that beer bursts into song. Oh, that's good. I was in bed lying next to my girlfriend, so I did record the song whilst trying not to wake her. <laughs> so the bear does sound like it's sort of creepily whispering. Do you want to hear it? Creepily whisper? I think the thing that troubles me most of all is how smug the bear's face is. <laughs> OK, Lou. You know how nice it is to burst the coffee pot? When you push through the yeah. thing at the top. That's the best burst, Yeah. famously. Well, this is even better because it's a creme brulee. It's a two-prong burst, OK? OK. At the end of it, you've got coffee and you've got a pudding. OK, what am I bursting, Lou? The gold the, the gold seal. Oil. I wouldn't do that. I'd what? run a spoon round the outside, I'd lift it off and I'd dispose of it. He Wait. always does that. He does always do that. He knows that. But I've gone the extra mile and I've put a picture of you on the creme brulee. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting that I burst through the top of a creme brulee? <laughs> <laughs> No-one would say, I can't wait to burst into this creme brulee, Lou. They would in my family. <laughs> 
Well, what have you got, Sean? Because that's obviously shit. So, I did a 24-hour Zumbathon for charity. Like that, though. And uh, <laughs> I got blisters on my feet. Oh, you would have done the Zumbathon. You're going to get loads. <sighs> but I also got a blister on my bottom. My husband, using gin, a kettle and a needle... The classic trio. <laughs> <laughs> First... I didn't know you were married to MacGyver. Duh. <laughs> Anyone outside of London is a savage, aren't they? <laughs> I've recreated oh. it. That's not my actual ball. <laughs> Who doesn't want to burst that with a pin? Come on. It's very burstable. OK, should we give some points out? Yes, OK. OK, you can't pop a creme brulee. One point. No! <laughs> that doesn't make sense! I love you can't the song, though. You can't burst it. You can't burst a creme <laughs> brulee. One point. Joe. It was good, but not good enough. Two. Two points. Three. Sorry, that bear's face just irritated me. Three points for <laughs> eight. <laughs> OK, uh, good. Well, I'm going to give the blister, because it's the prince of burstable things, mm. five points, and I'm going to give old dick mouth four. <laughs> there you go. Five points to Sean Gibson! <laughs> right, Alex, uh, what do you have ready for us? Uh, here's a clue. It's a larvely little task. <laughs> Hello, Joe. Hi, Al. How are you? Alex. I'm good, thank you. Alex. <laughs> Build the best volcano. You have ten minutes to design your volcano blueprint. You then have 20 minutes to build and demonstrate your volcano. Your time starts now. Um, what have we got to build with? We need cork. Yeah? It's like bicarbonate of soda and something. Or oh, then what's the kind of the one that like Mentos and cola? Was that is that a thing? Mentos. Yeah? That'll go up like a like Christmas. If you burn sugar, does that erupt? That's your lava. Sorted. Red jelly. Red jelly. <laughs> and then how do I make the cane all bit? I'm gonna build a mountain with a hole. <laughs> uh, can I get a volcano mould? <laughs> Still thinking. <laughs> it's just a bit of bit of pipe or something, isn't it? Like um, like a, a vase. I'm not sure, so I'm not sure where the Pringles tube comes into this, but I'm excited at that. So I'm going to put that round and then yeah, that will do. And that, my friend. <laughs> is a volcano. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Lovely. Um, Ian said at one point, um, how do I build the Kano bit? <laughs> and I'm just interested in your distinction between vol and Kano. I assumed that the vol, that's your liquid, <laughs> and the Kano is the, the solid. Vol and Kano. Thank you. Okay, I sure. believe it was Keats that won. <laughs> Uh, first to the table, it's the classically trained volcano impresario, Joe Thomas. <laughs> Prepare. Right. Oh, OK. Ready? Yes. Yeah. All right. That worked? It worked a bit, hasn't it? Ah! <laughs> OK. So that's the first. That's the first eruption. How long? 30 seconds. Right, not on. A second eruption as well. It was good, wasn't it? That Mentos thing is. Um... Maybe that's what happened in Pompeii. Maybe that's why they were so frozen. <laughs> that was what happened. Well, they did have that big Mentos factory there, didn't they? Yeah. One of the. Uh... <laughs> uh, next, it's someone who, like me, is actually quite tall in real life. It's Ian Sterling. I'm six foot two. Five foot four. Mm. <laughs> Come on! Come on! 
many as you can physically get in there. We can do a few more than that, I reckon. Put them all in. Josh is there. Rob's right at the top. Bob's down there. No Pert's there. And Catherine's here. They're, they're, all, they're all conquerors. Okay. This is dedicated to all the champions of champions. I hope to join you all one day on this magnificent volcano. Go in. Oh. No, no, no. It's a ten minutes up, Ian. We've all been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's increasingly, I find. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm so, I'm so genuinely heartbroken by it. I can't even uh, begin mm. to ridicule you. I think it's, um, <laughs> it's a crying shame. The, the engineering, oh. the vision, and then that. <laughs> And the cry of, I'll see you in the champion of champions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it, it's just, it's, it's a Shakespearean tragedy. How'd you feel? I, ge <laughs> I genuinely don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> <laughs> OK, look, we're going to pause for a second because it's time now for the first part of the advert show. Enjoy. <laughs> Over now to my tiny assistant, Alex Horn, to fill you in on the detail. <laughs> Am I on? I'm on. Thanks, Greg. What a show this is turning out to be. Before the break, we saw two volcanoes made for the current volcano-making task, and one of them proved to be active. Next, to erupt, it's Paul Sinha. You can clearly see it's got the geology and shape and morphology of a, of a volcano. It's bubbling under. The villagers are starting to panic. Is this Pompeii 79 AD all over again? Is it? We're about to find out. <laughs> Amazing. I need a cigarette after that. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, the build-up was sensational. <laughs> so much lovely backstory, but I think that the answer to the question, is this Pompeii 79 AD <laughs> again, is no. <laughs> Throughout the task, Paul did list the highest volcanoes in the world. Oh, what is the highest volcano in the world? I think it's Chimborata. Chimborata. What's the smallest volcano in the world? That. <laughs> Next up, another volcano. OK, it's Sean Gibson next. Here's how she got on. A little bit of soil around. Fire. Mine's like a party volcano. Pipe cleaners, last bit, lava. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> Volcano. <laughs> it's on fire now, Sean. It's a real fire. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. I don't think I understood the task. It seemed to be uh, it had already erupted because there was jelly everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so was this a second eruption? I just want to. Does that happen, Paul? Do you have a second? <laughs> <laughs> Do you get a second eruption? Quite frequently, yeah. Yes. Didn't, so it didn't erupt, it didn't erupt. No, it didn't. It didn't, they didn't say, say erupt. There was no ball, no. there was no ball, <laughs> there was no ball. There was a lot of Kano, though. <laughs> <laughs> so much Kano. Real Kano. Kano. <laughs> Did it say in the task, do an erupting yep. volcano? No, it said build the best volcano. Oh, I, I apologise. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You want to see the last one? Yeah. <laughs> OK, well, last to go off, it's Lou Sanders. Volcano, OK? That 
that's actually lovely. I'm ready for the big finale. And by that I mean, can we turn the lights down? Topography was sweet. Mm. <laughs> I put a couple of turds on it. What can I say? <laughs> I think the aftermath of the eruption perhaps didn't look as spectacular as you might have hoped. Yeah. But mid eruption. It was lovely. Mm. Very good. We were having a right old time of it, weren't we? Mm. I really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Originally, she tried to mould it around a witch's hat and that was too floppy, so then just got a rock. Right. Um, but that was quite sensible. Yeah. Yeah. Even the witch's hat. There's some logic to it. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were all really good volcanoes, and this is very difficult. So I'm, I'll tell you this: you. I'm not going to give anyone just one point. Okay, who's going to give? I'm going to give mm -hmm. um, Sean and Ian two points. What? Oh, no. I'm happy with that. Thank you, Sean. And that young man is a lesson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've got joint fourth. Have we got anyone in the third? Uh, yes, with three points, I'm going to give the hot, thin, high stream of piss volcano. <laughs> Paul's in half. It's Paul's. OK, three And I am really struggling because the other two were both so spectacular. <laughs> I'm going to give them both five points now. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'd really like a scoreboard update. And I want to make you happy. Here we go. We have three people in a tie for first place. It looks like this. Joe, Paul and Sean on seven points. Ooh, close. Next, what do you have for me? It's time to settle down, grab some popcorn and watch a little film I've called The Horn Identity. Here we go. <laughs> Work out what Alex Horn is wearing next door. Both you and Alex must stay in your seats at all times. Alex Horn may only communicate with Alex Horn's horn. You have a maximum of 15 minutes. Fastest wins, your time starts now. You can blow your horn to say you can hear me. <laughs> Pretty straightforward horn code system task. Yes, similar uh, task. Looked very expensive. Why was it not done in the caravan? <laughs> Fancy a day out to a train, did we? I like trains. I do like, I like trains. I like... OK, well, we'll speak about that later. Come on, okay. let's crack on. Right, well, it's a simple task of communication and brain power, so we're going to start with a clever, brainy person, Joe Thomas. Let's... Can I...? Uh, um, <laughs> what I'm going to ask is, uh, if the answer is yes, can you toot once? And if the answer is no, can you toot twice? Can you toot once to show you've understood that? <laughs> Are you wearing a pair of underpants? <laughs> Are you wearing some sort of all-in-one costume or outfit? Um... Uh, <laughs> Are you wearing something that is actually designed to be worn as clothes? Is, uh, is three toots a way of saying that it's, an, um, it's ambiguous? OK. Oh, man. Um, is it made of soft fabric? <laughs> is, it, um, is it a mascot costume? <laughs> sorry, I, sorry, I've forgotten. Is it... Is it soft? <laughs> Are you dressed as an animal? <laughs> is it a furry animal? <laughs> Is it a warm-blooded animal? Um, some sort of big cat, dog, rodent, mammal. Is it a usual pet? Oh. Are you just? Are you just as a bear? Are you a mammal? But you are warm-blooded. Is this animal a, a character from some sort of fictional universe? Oh. Um. Wallaby. <laughs> Oof. 
It seems she spent a lot of time <laughs> establishing a system, <laughs> but then just totally ignoring all of the answers that you got back. Well, Alex introduced this sort of element of ambiguity, which was... So I, I, I was think, Alex, this... if, if anything, I should be telling Alex off for helping you out with his three-honk system. <laughs> Thank well, you. I, I still had to three understand honk. what three-honks meant. It wasn't... You worked it out pretty quickly. I worked it out pretty quickly. It's one of the few things you did work out <laughs> <laughs> before you sighed and said wallaby. It was when, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was not ambiguous about whether or not it was a mammal, and then after I said that, you mainly said mammals. <laughs> I couldn't quite remember the difference between warm, like, warm-blooded mammal... Mate, you got stuck in a mammal groove. I it's got fine. Stuck in a, yeah. <laughs> We've all yeah. done it. <laughs> OK, let's stop for a bit. Am I worried about whether you'll return after the break? Absolutely not, because one of these guys is going to win a grape. <laughs> Horns, horn? Horns, and horns, horn, to be precise. The next two to decipher my honks are... <laughs> and... <laughs> Paul and Ian? Correct. <laughs> Honk once for yes, honk twice for no. Do you understand? <laughs> Do you have a hat on? <laughs> Trousers of any kind? <laughs> no. Do you have shorts on? <laughs> You're not wearing pants. Skirt? Fuck! Are you wearing a shirt? Do you have a dress on? No! Leggings? Tights? Um, oh, a wetsuit. Leotard. Long johns? <laughs> Damn it! Is it a one-piece? Are you wearing anything on your feet? Do you have shoes on? Socks? Flip-flops? Flippers. Do you have a tail? Are you dressed as an animal? Yes! A lion! Is it a mammal? No! Is it a bird? A tiger, bear, chicken, crocodile, kangaroo, badger? <laughs> Does the species that the bird is known by begin with the letter A? B? Larger than a human! A jungle creature that's smaller than a human. Crocodile! O, P. Is it a pigeon? Meerkat! Does the name of this bird have one syllable? Is it a bird? Is it a partridge? Pelican! The third letter of this word, a B. Parrot! P A R. Alex Holmes are in a parrot one, it's seven o'clock! Are you dressed as a parrot? <laughs> Amanda believes that a saltwater crocodile is smaller than a human being. <laughs> it's just beating me to a parrot. I mean, you can't go on any quiz show ever, because you give an answer and then you go, FUCK! <laughs> <laughs> That's your system. But you don't understand, I said so many animals. Mm. You stuck to your system for a long time. You got P-A-R and still... We're and you knew partridge. it was a bird, and you got to... <laughs> <laughs> and you drooled partridge out. <laughs> OK, well, Shouty Madman, uh, 37 seconds and seven minutes. OK, and Clever Stupid Man? <laughs> <laughs> clever Stupid Man, 36 seconds and eight minutes. Oh. So there was oh. just 59 seconds in it, but Ian currently in the lead. Next, it's time to send in the SAS, Sean and Sanders. Remember, one for yes, Two for no. That is the system. That should always be the system. <laughs> Can you honk once for yes and twice for no? <laughs> okay, so it's two for yes, one for no. <laughs> cool. Are you wearing clothes? <laughs> Are you wearing something of nationality, like Scottish outfit or Norwegian? <laughs> yeah, sure. Are, th are, the, are they? Are they? Are they fancy dress clothes? <laughs> Are you a woman? <laughs> Are you dressed in a theme? <laughs> yes, OK. Are you an animal? <laughs> Is it duck themed? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a jungle animal? <laughs> Are you colourful? <laughs> Would I have seen you in The Lion King? <laughs> Are you a lion? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Are you a crocodile? Swan. Are you an elephant? Are you a frog? Are you cute? Oh. Are you a bird? You're a bird! A giraffe! Are you a 
a pigeon? A rhino! A wood pigeon. <laughs> Are you a bird? <laughs> Alan Partridge! <laughs> Parrot! <laughs> Parrot! <laughs> Pretty efficient stuff from mm. uh, both contestants, I thought. Two or three um, hesitations. One was uh, where you very sweetly just paused to go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alex was cute, although you'd have to take his word for it. I enjoyed you, um, the subsections of the pigeon community you explored. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, who won. My instinct is that Sean's efficiency... Mm. Oh, let's see, you well, tell me. I, I, will show, I will tell you. Well, bear in mind, Joe never found out that I was a parrot. No, he did not. He did not. Uh, Ian currently in the lead with 7 minutes 37. Lou, 7 minutes 11 seconds. Yes. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Sean, though... Oh. 314 oh. seconds. 5 minutes 14. Wow. She got rid of my Pretty good. Nought points to Joe, two to Paul, three to Ian, four to Lou, but one more time, five points to Sean Gibson. Boom! Boom! Uh, can we have another one of those task things, please? Yes. Welcome all to the Taskmaster Confessional. Alex is in the living room. In 20 minutes from now, you must apologise to Alex for something you've done in that time. Best apology for worst thing wins. Your time starts now. OK. OK, so I've got to do something really bad. Uh... I mean, I, I'm very easily affected by guilt anyway, so I mean, I could probably just go in now and just apologise for just the way I've lived my life. <laughs> Have we got, like, a guitar? What can I do with a poo? <laughs> they don't find the guitar. There must be a guitar somewhere. Uh, quite a contrasting set of supervillains. Mm. <laughs> uh, Ian was absolutely... His is going to be guitar-based. We knew that <laughs> from the start. Joe just uh, apologising for existing. <laughs> <laughs> By far the most sinister <laughs> was the man who said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and then walked into yeah. the house. OK, well, it's not an easy task for me, this. They had to do the best apology for the worst thing. So yes. Judging it on two counts, we're going to find out what naughty boy Joe Thomas got up to first. What is naughty boy? <laughs> naughty boy. Oh, hi, Alex. Hello, Joe. Hi. I just want to have a quick word. Um, sort of a number of things, really. I've been enjoying the task, but... Um, there's a few things I've been sort of mildly annoyed about, and, and um, I've, sent, I've sent it to you um, on your phone. Well, it's a, it's a sung message. So are you apologising for the song I'm about to listen to? Um, I'm apologising if it causes any offence, but um, I thought it was best to sort of to kind of clear the air. Yeah. Oh, have you heard the good news? Alex Horn is finally dead. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is dead. I feel like I can finally breathe. Yeah, I mean, it's quite, it's quite harsh, as I say, but... Alex's murder is evidence for the existence of God. Alex's murder? Murder. Well, yeah, um, murder's a bit strong. A person should be led off and knighted. Fuck off, Alex! <laughs> and you stand by what you said? Well, I stand by those feelings. I'm, I'm not saying I'd act on them necessarily today or this week. <laughs> Well, thank you for coming, coming clean. I appreciate but, your honesty. Okay, no, no problem, no problem. Okay, well, good stuff. You know, you, you're a good bloke. Okay. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, see you later. Hello. Yeah, I got a bit lost in it. I enjoyed <laughs> it. Yeah. I, there's so many lines I enjoyed. Alex's murder uh, would be evidence for the existence of God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty harsh as well. Oh, it's an awful thing to say. A terrible thing to say. Yeah, yeah, it it was, I didn't feel the apology was great. Well, he said you were a good bloke at the end. Yeah, yeah give me a little thumbs up. Got that. <laughs> yeah. Thumbs up and I shuffled off. Good bloke, thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what more do you want? OK. Yeah. OK, who's next? OK, well, next up, uh, sinner by name, let's see how bad he really is. It's Paul. <laughs> oh, hello, Paul. I'm so, so sorry. What are you sorry for? 
I've been under a lot of stress. I've been on this 5-2 diet, which has caused me cravings. And I just walked in this morning, and I meant to be on a two-day, 600 calories, and I opened up the fridge, and there was all sorts of deliciousness there. I just had a bit of a crisis. Right, what have you done, Paul? Kind of destroyed the fridge. I've been very selfish. I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I just lost my mind. Yeah. I'm going to go and look at the fridge. So sorry. I feel a bit weird after that, Paul. <laughs> I don't know, you had the countenance of a serial killer. <laughs> well, your worst crime was eating a bit of jam with your fingers, as far as I could work out. So I wasn't there while he was doing this, because I was waiting, but the crew did say it was, an, it was odd. Yeah. <laughs> Should we see another one? Yeah, who do you want to see? Sean. OK, me too. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, gorgeous. Oh. You smell nice. Thank you, Sean. That's, that's kind of... Oh, look at that. I'm really sorry. You've got my phone. Soz, you left your phone in the kitchen, so mm. I'm really sorry about that. I might have used one of my personal pictures and thought it was my phone and sent it to someone else, but it was on your phone, but I meant to say... <laughs> I just caught a glimpse. To Greg. That's the worst person you could have sent it to. Where did you get the picture from? Why has it got my face? <laughs> it's just come to Mama. How many people have you sent it just to Greg? Oh. <laughs> well, thank you for this. I do appreciate that. It's quite a flattering picture, though. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. <laughs> There was an accompanying text with the picture, wasn't there? Yeah. What was it? It just said, come to Mama. Come to Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Alex was genuinely... I thought he was going to cry. <laughs> well, at first, I thought you sent it to everyone that I know. I'm not going to do that. No, you wouldn't send it to his wife because she knows the horrible truth of what you look like. <laughs> And I have spoken to her, actually, mm. and she said that that picture is nothing like you because <laughs> the man in that picture had a big penis and small testicles where you are, and I quote, <laughs> quite the reverse. <laughs> Want to see a blister burst and come back for the final part of the show? to Taskmaster, where there was a lot of misbehaviour before the break. Yes, there was. There was gluttony from Paul, wrath from Joe, and lust from Sean. <laughs> but at least they apologised, Greg. Uh, next up, to say soz... You don't ever... You've never said sorry to me. You've never come off the script before and tried to bring me in. <laughs> next up, to say soz, it's Ian! Alex, I just pied you in the face. Alex, it was a total disgrace. Alex, I hope that I see you in heaven. All the champions are champions. <laughs> Series 11, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Can open the door. I'm sorry. Do you want me to open the door for you? I'm all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Lo really lovely, despite your constant assertion that you're going to be the champion of champions. No, I don't know where that came from. And it's nice that your apology was about something that actually happened. So yeah. This was just a threat, but you did actually pie him. Quite, f quite hard. It was my first ever pieing, but <laughs> you smacked me in the face. <laughs> what about Lou? Lou? Uh, well, 
she's potty-mouthed and potty-named. Here she goes, Lou Sanders. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I wanted to make an apology. I'm so, so sorry for what I've done. I've done something to your car. Should we... <laughs> I got your car, I threw some shit on it. But, in order to make you feel better about it, I've signed you up for these classes with your mo real mobile number. Jazzercise, life coaching, estate agents, they're all gonna call you back, crystal healing, PPI checks, insurance, body wax, indoor surf classes, pony trekking, confidence classes, judo and Scientology. Welcome to your new life. So to say sorry for what you've done for the car, you've signed me up for these things. Yeah. But this is worse than that. <laughs> The apology is worse than what you've done. Which means more points for Lily. The balloon wasn't even part of it. <laughs> you can have that <laughs> to start with. The teaser. Yeah. Yeah. Then obviously you've made a terrible mess of his horrible red car. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's horrible red, don't you think? Horrible red, sort of. But I think that the real diabolical crimes <laughs> were committed after that because it genuinely was Alex's phone. It was. That you signed him up to all those <laughs> awful things on. The Jazzercise lady was so nice. Wendy, said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you signed up for Scientology? Yeah. Well, Anton has stopped calling me. <laughs> uh, the estate agents still call me. <laughs> every Monday That's afternoon. Worse than Scientology. It's the worst. That's the worst. But Wendy is the one that I now have some sort of a relationship with. <laughs> right, let me give out some points. Okay. Okay. Uh, Paul's uh, apology was <laughs> so creepy, but uh, but the crime wasn't bad enough for me because I eat jam with my hands all the time. So I'm going to give him <laughs> just one point. One point to Paul. Yeah. If Joe had murdered you, he'd have got three points. <laughs> I'm going to give him two points. You would have only given him three points for murdering him. That's how <laughs> like, that's that's little I care. Um, three points. I'm going to give it to Sean for exposing the true horror of your genitals. Um, Ian's song was absolutely uh, wonderful, but a pieing isn't the most diabolical of crimes. I'll give him four points. Right. And Lou, I mean, I just hate people like that getting hold of your phone. It's such an evil, twisted crime. <laughs> she must take the five points. Five points goes to Lou Saunders! <laughs> All right. Um, I think we should hear some scores. The scores? OK. Yeah. Lou and Sean, the ladies are at the top, both with 15 points. Yeah! yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Please stand up and strut up to the stage for the final task of the show! Hello. 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 Who's going to read the task Hello. out? I've given the task to Paul Sinha. Get into one sleeping bag with your arms through the armholes, the zip zipped up and the hood on your head. Then stand to attention and salute the taskmaster for a full five seconds. Then get into the other sleeping bag with your arms through the armholes, the zip zipped up and the hood on your head while still in your first sleeping bag. <laughs> then skip once. The fastest wins. OK. Whoa, 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 whoa! Blow your little whistle. Good luck. You may don your first sleeping bag and the second and do the saluting in the middle. <laughs> Off they go. <laughs> go them with a bag. Yeah. One's out. What? I can't get it out of the bag! What's on, Sean? <laughs> yeah, you've got to get out of the bag. <laughs> oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. There it is. There it is. <laughs> I'm not allowed to help, I'm not allowed to help. Still in the back, yeah. Do you want to pull? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Problems here. It's still in the bag. Was it five seconds, Joe? Was it five? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. It really seemed like okay. five to me. Yeah. Oh, it's full. Uh, the piece of shit! The piece of shit! The piece of shit!
We have two left. We have two left. Okay, Paul, it's now up to you whether or not you want to carry on. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> Before the show, Alex said you haven't mentioned your injured shoulder. And I said, I'll only mention my injured shoulder when my injured shoulder is actually fucking affecting how I'm performing. <laughs> Let's get it here. Quite a touching scene. Do they? <laughs> I mean, it is the most touching moment in Taskmaster history. <laughs> uh, we'll work that out, and then we'll add it to the final scores. Come back down and join me. <laughs> what would you do if somebody didn't salute you for the full five seconds? I would give them an absolute maximum of one point. No. What if we saluted you for more than five seconds? Mm, that's not relevant in your case. <laughs> Sean, the briefest of the salutes at 2.09 seconds. Hi. <laughs> Lou Sanders saluted for the correct period of time. Thank you. Well done, Lou. Yeah. She comes second in the task. So there's more people in the last place. We know Sean's in last place. <laughs> Tragically, Paul Sinha did not salute for five seconds. Oh. <laughs> and the third person in last place, Joe Thomas, did not salute oh. for long enough. God. What was that? What, how oh. long was that? You saluted for 3.2 seconds. Men always think it's longer than it is. <laughs> <laughs> not all men. He's right. <laughs> Ian wins the task and five points! Right! <laughs> We have an outright winner. She's won two shows in a row. The winner with 19 points is Lou Sanders! <laughs> Lou Sanders is the winner of episode three. Please head up to the stage and prepare to pop! <laughs> so, what have we learned today? We've learned that no matter what disappointment life throws at you, relationships that don't last the course, ambitions unfulfilled, periods of utter loneliness, console yourselves that you've never stooped as low as entering a solitary grape as a prize. <laughs> and Lou Sanders styled it out to win the episode. Well done to her, and good night to you. Keep warm. Bye-bye. <laughs>